Hello dear subscribers and other viewers. Welcome to my video on efficient market hypothesis. Uh, this video has two components. First I'm going to explain you the concepts and then I'm going to explain you, uh, 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 you know, this concept further with some questions which are in form of MCQs. Uh, while this uh, video has been created with, uh, having NISM Series 21B Portfolio Manager Certification Examination in mind, uh, let me just tell you that uh, this particular topic is asked in multiple exams. Uh, so, you know, it does not matter if you go through this video, you will get the understanding of the topic and you can apply that in other exams also. Uh, let me reiterate that this uh, video is connected with Chapter 13 of uh, NISM Series 21 Portfolio Manager Certification Examination. Let, I will proceed with this to the first slide which is uh, about some of the basic concepts that we need to understand. So we are starting with the first question and these all questions uh, will take us to the concept of efficient market hypothesis. So are markets efficient? You know, that's, a, that's the first question to ask. And what is the meaning of market efficiency? You know, if you have to ask in terms of, uh, you know, a, a simple language, uh, it means that all the information is incorporated in the price of a stock or a security. Okay, so that kind of a market is what we call as efficient, but do we have such kind of a market? Uh, and obviously the next question that you see here is linked to that. Does the price of a share reflect all available information about that particular stock? You know, that's, that's, that's very, very critical. Uh, is there a scope to make money um, uh, and make more money than what investments or the market movements offer? So the point that we are trying to investigate here is that if you are an investor and you have bought say an index fund, an index fund is giving 13% return to you or any other index is giving you say 15% or 10% return, can you beat that return? That's a very important question to ask. So the idea is to find out can the market be outperformed? Can you generate more returns than uh, you know what market offers? Okay. And how realistic is mispricing in the market? That's also a very important question to investigate. Shares can be underpriced, overpriced, uh, uh, potentially, but uh, efficient market hypothesis has its own thought about this mispricing. So we'll try to investigate that also. With this, I'll move ahead to the next slide, which is about the concept of efficient market hypothesis. Okay, now this is an hypothesis. We need to understand that very clearly. It's not a theory, it's a hypothesis, and that's why we know that uh, we need to understand that hypothesis is an assumption, an idea that is proposed for the sake of argument so that it can be tested to see if it might be true. So we are not assuming it to be true. We are not saying that markets are efficient. We are, we are having a kind of an hypothesis here and that's what is getting tested, you know. So we will see that there could be exceptions to this uh, concept of efficient market hypothesis, but broadly it may so happen that market would appear as uh, you know efficient but uh, that will be at a later stage so what is the meaning of efficient market you know let us go back to that concept again and pharma who won nobel prize in economics has said that you know efficient market hypothesis is a fair game model uh, which states that in an efficient market investors can be confident that the current market price fully reflects all available information about a security. So as an investor, you have to have this you know, understanding and you can be broadly confident or rather confident that all the information is already incorporated in the price of a security. That's the starting point. But this concept has been further broken up into three forms of efficiency. The first one is the weak form of efficiency. What is weak form of efficiency? Uh, it, it, you know, says that this form of efficiency says that price reflects all the historical information about a stock. So whatever has happened in the past, the price is reflecting that and all the data points related to history, historical information is already captured. Okay. And that's precisely the reason, you know, technical analysis does not have much of significance as per this form of efficiency, because if you talk to technical analysts, they look at the chart, they look at the price behavior of the past and try to predict the pattern in future. You know, so that's where this weak form of efficiency, uh, you know, argues that markets are you know, already having those information. So there is no point in using that as a data point. The next and very, very important aspect is the semi-strong form of efficiency. So what does it say? 
it says that stock prices fully reflect historical as well as publicly available information so you have historical information but there could be certain information which may be coming from time to time publicly available information just as news about economy you know some data points related to gdp interest rates which are publicly available information and they are all incorporated including some of the actions that a company may be initiating related to mergers and all that okay so all those information is incorporated as per semi strong form of efficiency and investors who base their decision on information after it is public cannot derive above uh, average risk adjusted return so as, as an ordinary investor there is no way that you can you know generate a return which could be higher than the risk adjusted return that's what it tries to say and the strong form of efficiency incorporates one more data point with respect to the information and that is the insider information which you know typically uh, people outside the business or the company do not have but this form of efficiency talks about the fact that stock prices reflect historical publicly available information as well as insider information now that's very important because insider information is also there in the price so there is no way that you can do anything more than what the market is doing and that's why no group of investors should be able to derive above average risk adjusted return uh, from the market that's what this form of efficiency talks about having said this and having discussed all these forms of efficiency let us look at the fact that it is not that market always appears to be efficient there are mispricings that will come across in market for instance there was a phenomena called as january effect uh, which reflected the fact that many investors would sell their shares in december just to book some losses and buy it back in january because december is the year end or the closing of the year in many of the western countries or advanced countries okay so this january effect okay uh, uh, shows that uh, you know investors would uh, sell uh, under performing stocks to lock a you know capital loss for the year okay thereby reducing their tax bill which causes a temporary dip in the price okay in january prices recover when buying picks up again okay that's this is said to be one of the anomaly in the market which is not explained by the concept of efficient market hypothesis okay uh, what could be the other anomaly so many times it has been seen that the small companies show a faster growth than larger companies okay uh, you know and uh, uh, small firms consistently experience larger risk adjusted return than larger firms so this this explains the fact that you know you have higher potential rate of return which is there because of the fact that smaller firms may have more growth potentials okay and it is also observed uh, you know uh, uh, under many research that stocks with higher book to price okay also have generated superior risk adjusted returns so there is a potential of generating higher returns in context of size and value in the market and that's where the efficient market hypothesis fails to explain uh, this aspect okay additionally um, you know many times people create portfolio they are fund managers who get rewarded in form of alpha uh, where they beat the market and such instances are uh, not uh, you know one or two they could be many of course in developed countries you will find uh, less of such incidents but in developing countries you will find more of such in, uh, you know incidents or some more of such uh, you know uh, cases happening where fund managers have consistently outperformed the market so do you do have some kind of uh, you know uh, exception to this which is there in case of uh, what you call as efficient market hypothesis having said this let me move to the uh, next uh, part of the video which is about quiz and the quiz uh, basically takes you through these questions that we are going to discuss but uh, before i start the quiz let me tell you that information efficiency and transactional efficiencies have to be distinctly understood information efficiency is what we have just spoken about transactional efficiency comes in form of cost and other factors okay having said this let me move to the first question which is about which of the following is true about the concept of efficient market so you have four options you can very clearly see efficient market is one in which the transaction cost is zero as i said this is transactional efficiency not information efficiency so this option is ruled out efficient market provides opportunity to easily spot a mispriced stock you please read this as the stock because i think uh, this is a, a small mistake so i'll just highlight it you need to read this as the stock and not the spot okay and make money no the efficient market hypothesis does not talk about it efficient market is one where the market price is an unbiased estimate of true value of security 
uh, uh, well, this is what we just discussed. And that's why this is the answer. Efficient market does not provide risk-free return. So our answer in this case would be C, okay? Now, having said this, okay, let me move to uh, the question number two, which is about which of the following could be the reason for trades to be done in an efficient market. So if markets are efficient, okay, they're pricing everything, okay, then uh, why could there be need to do the transactions? Why could uh, there be need uh, to do uh, you know trades okay uh, so uh, considering this let us look at the uh, four options that we have here need for liquidity portfolio rebalancing presence of huge arbitrage opportunity liquidity and portfolio rebalancing both okay so if you see uh, uh, the need for liquidity could be definitely a reason because if you want to sell your portfolio because you need cash that could be the reason portfolio rebalancing could also be the reason because you could rebalance your portfolio even an index fund because the construct of the index has changed so the answer to this would be both liquidity and portfolio rebalancing so that's the d option we move on to the next one which of the below mentioned form of market you know hypothesis states that prices reflect not just historical and current publicly information but also insider information too now this is something which we get in strong form of market efficiency so the answer for this particular quiz is c this takes us to question number four okay and it says if a skilled fundamental analyst and insider trader can earn the same long uh, risk adjusted return what form of market efficiency is likely to apply so if you are a fundamental analyst and you have access to uh, information okay which is uh, 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 probably not publicly available not everybody has got that access so the answer in this case would become semi strong form which is c because as an insider you will have information some of the information which is not available uh, to a fundamental analysis and that's why the answer should have become uh, the second one but here it is c which is semi strong form uh, the next question is about which of the following information is not covered in the weak form of market efficiency. So all the historical price is there, rate of return is there, trading volume data will be there. But news of corporate restructuring which has just come in, which is part of the publicly available information is not part of it. So we'll put it as the D. Okay. The next question is the question number six, which is about which of the following type of investment suggest that markets are efficient you know what gives an indication of efficiency of market so let us investigate three options and the fourth one also is which is none of the above investment in high beta stocks no high beta stocks uh, uh, is not what you get from uh, you know efficient market hypothesis investment in specific high pe stocks okay so high pe stocks like are like high beta stocks in in the way that you know they have more put higher potential to generate returns so those are not explained by you know uh, this uh, and then investment in index fund yes because if markets are efficient you have to be with market and you have to you know mimic it in form of an index fund so the answer for this would be a we move on to question number seven the weak form of efficient market hypothesis states that successive price changes are dependent okay that's the option one they are independent they are biased and they depend on trading volumes so we would say that in this case the answer would be b because successive price changes are not related to each other that do not have dependency you know uh, uh, you know they keep on changing independent of what has happened it's more about a random walk concept that gets you know uh, uh, triggered here and then finally stock with high book to price ratio have generated superior risk adjusted return this uh, statement explains which aspect of efficient market hypothesis you know so while it does not explain any aspect of it uh, the fact is that it does help us understand that markets are not efficient okay because if you have a higher risk adjusted return then obviously the market would appear to be efficient right so these are the eight questions that i wanted to discuss with you before i uh, put an end to this video so thank you for your time thank you for listening to me and you can write to me on health of my wealth at gmail.com i will reply uh, you know suitably after i get uh, x number of questions from my listeners viewers and the subscribers thank you once again for your valuable time hope to see you in some